What's happening, everybody? What's happening? Y'all come on in the room, man. Come on in the room. We got a lot to cover today. And I'm going to try to get this covered in time frame today. Uh, because what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, the miseducation of education. Now, I know that sounds like an enigma. Wrapped in a bad joke. But I'm going to show you the difference. Just giving you a few examples why we have been left out of the loop. Not just left out of the loop but why we've been left out of the money. And it is so funny. So y'all come on in. Let's get this thing started, man. I'm not going to waste any more time about it. Uh, but first off, uh, right out the gate, I want to uh, uh, drop the advertising right quick. We're running the summer uh, sale right now, promo, basically, for uh, anybody who wants to learn how to LLC your properly LLC your business as well as LLC your name. Now, this is something again, the miseducation, the miseducation of education, because they have been miseducating us or not even flat out telling us that we can do this. This is absolutely possible for us to do. I'm going to put that up there one more time. Um, how we can LLC uh, uh, your name as well as your business, uh, getting your EIN number, getting a business website and email, setting up your five trade lines or your five credit lines, uh, how to turn your liabilities and assets and trust accounts, tax write-offs, and much, much more. Ladies and gentlemen, you're getting that right now for $67. Now, normally that price is $197. That's how much the course normally is. But we've I've had such great success over the past month and a half with the last group. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm not doing any more live webinars as of right now. Let me say it that way. I'm not doing any more as of right now because it's very, very, very time consuming. It took up a lot of time. But we thanks to you guys and thanks to all of those who wanted to become entrepreneurs from entrepreneurs. There are 18 new business owners right now across the country, uh, as far out as Colorado, I mean, as far out as Arizona and going up to Colorado, uh, all the way up into Oregon, Oregon, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. I am humble family. I am humble. Peace and love to all of y'all for, for joining on to the course and becoming those new business owners. I mean, I, I, I can't say it enough, man. The, the North and South Carolina, Alabama, Texas, um, uh, Colorado, Oregon, Las Vegas, Arizona, Florida. I'm humble, family. I'm humble, family. Humble, very humble. But hey, let's get right off into this, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be talking about the miseducation of education. Now, a lot of stuff, or a lot of things that we have been taught, um, some of it, I'm going to say at least about 60%, was taught to us by people who didn't know themselves. And you can't necessarily fault or blame them for not knowing. I'm going to get my mics moved in a little bit closer. You, you can't necessarily fault or blame them for the things that they didn't know. You know, the, the faulting part is after so long that you have become an adult or into your adult, adult life, and, and that you evolve into your adult life, you start. You should be able to start picking up certain seeds from different people that we are around. Now, a lot of that is because we don't want to leave our base. That's what we know. We're familiar with that. But familiarity, ladies and gentlemen, brings on a certain cage of comfort. It's familiar. We're used to it. That's all we know. So why should we want to do anything else? And then the other part of that is laziness. The other 40%, because some of us have been taught 
the right way, but out of laziness, and that's even even the percentages of that laziness is not necessarily your fault, but we, because we have moved into a microwave society now, so everything is fast paced. And when everything is fast paced like that, people tend to take shortcuts. And when you tend to take shortcuts, <laughs> that's when, that's when we start to get comfortable in being lazy. Now, what are you trying to say, Brother Robert? Where are you taking us to? Simply, I'm taking you this way right here, ladies and gentlemen. The miseducation of education. When you break down the word educate, educ, the Latin word means from darkness. E, from, duco. D-U-C-O is translated to mean darkness. So when we educate, we bring people out of darkness of not knowing into the light of overstanding. It's kind of like when you walk into a dark room. Now, you're educated on what's in the room because you set this house up, you decorated this house. So I know from the door somewhere over there, I don't know how far I am because it's dark, but I know it's a couch there. Somewhere over here, I know I need to be more careful because it's a table with a glass vase on it. And if I hit that table too hard, it's gonna knock that vase over and then it's gonna break. So even in the darkness, we have some knowledge in the darkness. But it's not when we turn the lights on or we open up a curtain or open up the blinds and light comes in, in this sense, in this analogy, education. Now we have overstanding of how far I am from the couch, how far I am or how close I am to that table. So when you come across social media influencers and marketers, we are trying to bring you into the light of overstanding of knowing how to change your condition and live life on your own terms. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we do. We, we give you light. One, one primary miseducation of education is, and, and I know this is gonna probably set my, my, my uh, thread on fire, Illuminati. Let's just take that for instance. I'm just gonna put this out the hat, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm taking you somewhere, but I just wanna illustrate how we have been miseducated on education. Because we have been taught that the Illuminati is some bad cultish type group that's out for world domination. But until you study for yourself, and not believe everything that they tell you on the tell a lie vision or the tell a vision. Because <laughs> a lot of people don't know that we are being told a vision. Why do you think, oh, that's even, that's even better. Let me start right there. Let's start with the tell a lie vision or the tell a vision. Just on the words itself. T-E-L-L, -L, and I know it's not spelled that way. It's spelled T-E-L-E. -E. But when you, when you say it, spell it the way that it's spoken, T-E-L-L dash A dash V-I-S-I-O-N, vision, because no one says the telly, the television, unless you're in England somewhere. Oh, what's on the telly? But here we say tell up. Now I don't know how the E wind up being pronounced as an A, but but it's the tell a vision. Now, when we're being told a vision, this is now we come into the understanding of why they call them programs. 
on the tail of vision. Mm. Y'all better pick up what I'm putting down because it applies to this, what we're talking about today as in the form of business. See, when you've been told a vision, now you've been, you see that, you see that program that happens every day, every week, every month, year after year, season after season after season. Some of us were so drawn in and programmed, we couldn't wait for the next episodes of Ghost. We couldn't wait. We getting mad at 50 Cent. Man, when you coming out with the next season? Some of us were getting mad when after those 35, 45 minutes or an hour goes off and it leaves you on the cliffhanger. Oh, we so mad. We can't wait. We have been programmed to believe in this vision that was portrayed and acted out in front of us and we have just lost a whole hour of our lives on something that is not even real. What about football, basketball, sports? I get it, ladies and gentlemen. I have actually seen people get to fisticuffs. I mean, they get to squabbing over an Alabama and an Auburn game. People have actually been shot over a sport that they aren't even playing in, don't have a relative or a son or a daughter or cousin even playing on the team, aren't making any money off the team. They're not, they're not even the water boy. They're not the, the equipment manager, the cheerleader in the band. They're not the the sports physician, they're not one of the trainers. They're not even wrapping these people's ankles. But, ooh, they programmed. And they have lost two and a half hours of their lives watching something and being animated to the point of Man, I kill you, oh, oh. Now, listen, I'm a, I'm an Auburn fan. I'm not a diehard Auburn fan, but I enjoy watching Auburn play. Can't tell you who on the team, maybe a few players, but I became an Auburn fan because of Bear Bryant. So my really, that love that some Auburn fans have, I don't have that. I just like sticking it to Alabama because of Bear Bryant. That's it. Do your history, you'll find out and get some overstanding on why I don't like Alabama. The school, the university, the college. I don't care what you call it. I don't like them. And I got family members that graduated from the, 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 the school. I got family members uh, 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 that graduated from Alabama University. University of Alabama. And I, got, I have family that have graduated from Auburn University that actually live. My father's side of the tree comes out. Of, anyway, I'm getting too far off script. Let's go. But we're talking about the miseducation of education. And we're, the, the, the programming of the TV. And so we have been misled and pulled in and miseducated. Now we're into the world of social media, um, online news, and we're getting sucked in again. Some people actually have both on, the TV on and the computer on. Then they're on their cell phones on something else. We have all been miseducated and pulled in, and I mean, we've been deeply duped. 
And that's by design, ladies and gentlemen, because the more that your middle and poor class are wrapped up into being entertained, the wealthy keep getting richer. The miseducation of education. We have been miseducated on education. Another thing I want you guys to look at is we spend a ton of money on going to these prestigious schools of higher learning. But has anyone ever asked themselves, asked themselves the question, my college professor who is teaching me how to be an accountant, why isn't he a millionaire? Why isn't, now this man or woman have access to all of the new and current education coming out on accounting. They have to in order to teach you. So they have to know what they're talking about to teach you. But why they don't have their own accounting firm? Why aren't they investing into the stock market? Let's just go with another degree. Are you a financial planner? You're teaching people about having finances and how to control and run their finances and how they can become, you teaching them all of the, the dreams of America's uh, 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 vision, but they themselves aren't multimillionaires? You have teachers that have gone to school I mean, and they are historians. They literally, if you go to college and you want to be a history major, you are learning that education from a history major. But none of them work for the Smithsonian or some museum where they can get paid almost double their salary. You mean to tell me, I mean, now don't get me wrong. There are some people out there, they love educating more than they love the money. I get it. <laughs> but when you look at it, people who have degrees in business, they're teaching you how to get this degree in business, but they don't have a business. There is a miseducation in the education. And we've all been told a vision and programmed and lulled to sleep. Mm. Mm. Now let's try this in the business. Now before we even get to business, I'm going to touch on this. Uh... I recently went to Waffle House one time, right? And I asked them, now you would think that this person has been educated and taught on how to scramble eggs, how to scramble eggs soft. The miseducation of education. And I come to find out that everybody that says they can cook, can't cook. Now, if, if that's a difference between somebody in the house that said, man, you know, because when we do a lot of back and forth like that, uh, uh, even amongst my brothers and sisters, things like that. Ladies and gentlemen, don't adjust your cameras. My clippers went a little wild. <laughs> so I got the, the Hitler mustache right now for a, for a little while. It's going to grow back. Trust me, it's going to grow back. But don't adjust your, <laughs> don't adjust your, your, your laptop. But, uh, it, it kind of went, eh, you know, when you hear that sound, eh, you know, it's bad already. So hey, I just got to roll with it. But um, what we're talking about here is uh, everybody that says they can cook don't know how to cook. And just because they work in a restaurant don't necessarily mean that they know how to cook either. 
because what I received on my plate was not scrambled eggs. It was chopped eggs. The miseducation of education. See, ladies and gentlemen, just because you scramble it in the bowl, it doesn't stop there. You have to scramble it in the pan because it's actually cooking in the pan. But what they do is they'll let it cook and fluff on one side and then they'll flip it over and then they'll just start chopping it up with the spatula. That's not scrambled eggs. That's chopped eggs the miseducation. Now let's go to the world of business. Because in the world of business, we have been miseducated on the education that they gave us because for years, none of us ever knew the difference between a social security number and an EIN number. Just here recently on one of my posts, somebody asked the question, what's the EIN number? And somebody came back and told them employee identification number. And I just dropped my head. I was like, oh, brother. Oh, wow, really? See, they were in darkness. They just wasn't educated or to overstanding inside the darkness. Your employee, your EIN number is not your employee identification number. That's your social security number. Your social security number is your employee identification number. Your in employer identification number is your EIN. Now, on the, on the face of it, it's the exact same thing as your social security number. It's just a social security number for your business. So when you apply for an EIN number, you applying, your business is applying for a social security number in layman's terms. But a lot of us didn't know that. Just like we have been miseducated on thinking that all we have to do is go to school, get an education, and then we put in applications. Now, we were told throughout all of our adolescent years, you can be whatever you want to be. We just weren't taught on that. And what we were taught about it was miseducation about it. See, education is designed to make you a better employee. It's not designed to create it for you to be a boss. I've said that a number of times before. Having a job working for somebody else is only for you to be, I don't care how much education you got. Even if you are a doctor with a PhD, you still turn around and put in an application to work for a hospital. <laughs> put that feather in your hat. I don't, I don't care. You can be a PhD, you can be a judge. And you're still putting in an application to be a judge. You can be the chief of police, the sheriff. With all of that education you got, you still turn around and putting in an application because you work for the people. And the people can fire you. Mm. No contracts in being a sheriff. <laughs> That's an elected position. You don't do what we want you to do. We're going to fire you and we'll vote somebody else in there. Look at all the politicians that we got up there. All of those people are millionaires. Listen, listen, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. If you're running for politics, you got money. You have money if you're running for politics. You can't be out there on the campaign trail and then you ain't making no money. You got to be having some money come from somewhere because your bills are still running. So you have money when you're running for a political office. Don't get it twisted. We've been miseducated on what we've been educated on. So let's get back to how we're going to rate this to business. A lot of us didn't even know 
And if we did know, we didn't know how to do it. And when I mean we had knowledge of it, we heard it or somebody told us at some point in time, but we still didn't know how to do it. We've been told all of our lives to put your name on something. Man, buy you some land, get you a house, find you a nice wife or a husband and settle down and have some children, put your name on it. But we were never educated on how to not only get it, but maintain it. We were just told what we should do. A lot of us are spending money on these high dollar cars, not even knowing that we throwing money away every year. Huh? A lot of us don't even know that. We throwing money away every year. I remember when everybody was buying on the Suburban and the Expedition kick. We buying these vehicles that's over 6,000 pounds, but we don't even know that we got an automatic tax write-off if we but had a business. <laughs> Miseducation of being educated. All of that gas, and this was back in the day when gas was cheap, and this was because everybody was riding around in a Suburban or Expedition. Two big body vehicles. Even if gas was cheap back then at that time, we didn't know that the money we could have gotten back off of that because we were never educated on it. And if we were and told about it, we didn't have an understanding of what that was. We bought, we uh, uh, for those of you who have these nice big, three and four, 5,000 square foot houses, 6,000 square foot houses, 10,000 square foot houses. These huge houses, and we don't even know that we have a tax write-off. All of us who have, some of us who have acres of land, and we're paying every year property tax. <laughs> and we were never educated that all we had to do was stick us some cows or a couple of pigs or two horses out there on that land. And now it's farmland and we get kickbacks. You see what's wrong with that problem? The miseducation. A lot of us have... Uh, uh, some of us have airplanes. Spend a lot of money on that airplane for it to sit in the hangar. And we still got to pay. See, that's what most people don't understand. When you own an airplane, even though you are not even flying in it, you still have to pay that pilot. <laughs> I don't care if you got millions or not. You still have to pay for that pilot, and he's not even flying. But we were never taught that, okay, I have an airplane. I live here in Alabama. What I'm going to do is I'm going to partner or buddy up with somebody else in Birmingham because that's where the airplane, even in Gaston, Gaston has a municipal airport. I'm going to link up with somebody else, another business owner, in my city and what we're going to do is all right on days that i'm not using the plane then he can use the plane and then i'm going to charge him a fee to use my plane so if i am doing uh if i'm grounded here in gaston but he needs to take a quick trip to uh, uh dallas and he's going to be in Dallas for a week. I'm not going to park my plane in Dallas for a whole entire week paying for that pilot to just be sitting there. No. What I'm going to do then, I'm going to try to link up with someone in Dallas who's trying to fly to Georgia. And now I'm going to charge him to use my plane to get to Georgia. And then I'm not going to stop there. See, this is what education, proper education in business will take you down this road. Then I'm going to link up with somebody in Atlanta 
who's trying to fly back to Memphis. From Memphis back to Dallas, from Dallas back to Gaston or back to Birmingham or Montgomery. And then from Montgomery back to Gaston. Now, each one of those trips, I have made money to pay for my plane and my pilot. See, if I got a home out on the West Coast, but I'm might be out there two days out the month. I still got to pay that mortgage, but guess what I'm going to do with it? And I know a lot of you are already starting, the wheels are starting to turn. I'm going to Airbnb it. But if it's out there in LA and California and I have a nice home, guess what? All of these rappers and music artists looking for someplace to shoot their video, I'm not going to worry about Airbnb. I'm going to connect and link up to one of these production companies and now I'm going to have them shoot movies or videos at my house and I'm going to get paid that good money. I, I, well, man, you can't do that. I think y'all need to go look at those Tyler Perry videos. All of Tyler Perry's movies before he bought this big acreage of land to build a studio, Tyler Perry owned those houses. He probably still owns those houses. This is why all of his movies were shot in the same location. Now, what was happening when he wasn't doing videos in there? He actually turned it into sort of almost like a museum type of thing. Ice Cube did the same thing in LA where they shot the movie Friday he turned that house into a tourist spot now. So people who going through the hood, through South Central, this is the house that Friday was shot at. Debo was right here. Chris Tucker sat right here in this seat and it's still set up like it's the movie Friday. And he charges people a fee to go in there and look at it. See, that's being educated. That's being brought out of darkness into the light so you can understand how this money works. A lot of us, we have a ton of ass, a ton of liabilities that have asset potential. We've spent $240 or more on a pair of Jordans or a pair of LeBrons or some Kobe's. Mm. We've spent a lot of money on Gucci, Louis, Prada, Chanel. We have a lot of liabilities that aren't they, they don't that they don't have any boomerang on our money because we have been taught if you look good that kind of gives you the false sense of reality that you have arrived let's look at what happened just a year ago with mercedes benz mercedes benz and this is not a racial thing. This is a, ment a mentality thing. Black America bought more Mercedes Benz than any other race of people on the planet. <laughs> Let me say that again. Black America spent more money on Mercedes Benz than any other race of people on the planet. And then here's the worst part of it. All of those Mercedes-Benz purchases was the 350 series and less, which we call the working man Benz. <laughs> the 350 series and less? While the wealthy in this country buy the big body bands, 
the 6,000 pound cars where it's a tax write-off. So all of you who bought those Mercedes Benz last year, you're not getting anything back. It's still a liability. Now you look good. Yeah, y'all look real good. It's all shiny. You done waxed that thing up, then clean the shoes. Got an armor rolled. Oh, man, you can't even drink a bottle of water in these folks' cars. Don't be spending nothing in my car. <laughs> but all of that money that they're paying on those car notes, it's just going out and nothing is coming back. Not a cent. Gas after tank of gas after tank of gas. And then they just riding around town everywhere in them bins because they want everybody to know I got a bins. So they burning up more gas, waste, uh, 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 um, the aging the oil faster because you're just riding to and fro. Not going nowhere. The miseducation of education because we have been educated on, man, if you got a Benz, boy, people just gravitate to you when you have a Benz. But corporate America or the wealth in this country, they look at that, man, you bought that Ford Focus Mercedes. <laughs> That's what a 350 Mercedes little. You know, when I bought my Jaguar, I was so hyped about that Jag. And it was a working man's Jag. Actually, it was less than a workers' man jag. It was uh, a wealthy family's college kid's car. <laughs> yeah. It was an X type. Y'all Google that. It's an X and then there's an S. Mine was the X. The X type. Some, some wealthy family bought that for their daughter to go to high school in. But to me, it was a jag. But ooh, if I had a got that seven or the Jaguar XJ or the XJS, ooh, now that's when you have a ride but I was miseducated. And I was miseducated. But, and that's what, that's what, I'm, what I'm ultimately getting to you family is, and I want you guys to understand this. Everything that we have been taught, everything that we have been taught has been purposely mistaught to lead us down a different path. And we think we are doing it big because we got it. Well, we, we think we got it going down this different path, but the wealth of the country is going a different way. Did you know that the average person don't know the difference between passive income and residual income? Let that sizzle in your spirit. Passive income, and let me educate you properly on what that is. Passive income is income that you make with the least amount of work. Passive income. And it's constant. Passive income constantly comes in without you doing any hard work. You, have hear, you, will, you will hear the term making money while we sleep. A lot of social media influencers and marketers talk about that or they'll say that, but they won't give you the understanding. They won't illuminate any light on it to give you the understanding of what passive income is. 
Passive income is income constantly coming in and you did the least amount of work to get it. I guess you can say drug dealers make passive income. It's constantly coming in and they don't do no work, hardly no work to get it. Now, let me tell you something else. Residual income, residual and passive. And I used to give this question to my clients. Which one would you rather have, passive or residual? And they will all say passive. Some of them will say, I don't know what that is. So we already know what passive income is. Let me tell you what residual income is. Residual income is what you have left after you've paid all of your expenses or all of your bills. So I'm going to ask you, now that you know what these two entirely different things are and you've been educated to understand what these two things are, which one would you rather have? Passive, constantly coming in with least amount of work, or residual that that is left over after all of your bills are paid. Mm. Drop your comments in. Drop your comments in the comment section below. I want to hear. I want to hear the answers on this. Would you rather have residual income or passive income? Drop your comments down below. Now, let's get to this part, ladies and gentlemen, because we're getting ready to wrap this up. A lot of people don't know the difference between having a business and owning another job. We've been miseducated on that. I personally can personally attest to that miseducation, ladies and gentlemen, because I've had, I've owned another job since 1995 it didn't become a business until eight years ago all of that time that i had and i still have it the uh, premier leather crafters all of that time that i've had that leather business now that i thought was a leather business it was never llc mm. That business was never LLC. So all of the money uh, uh, under, the, under that business model, I can only claim certain things that I was spending. And everything was calculated automatically to earn income. And then I can only write off a portion or a part of the house it was only the house that i only the part of the house that i worked in because that's how it was set up as a home-based business so i was filing under that 1099 schedule c didn't know i could have written off everything including the house, including the truck, including the Jag, I could have written off everything. Some of y'all remember when I had that, that, that red uh, Z71 Silverado with the step side bed and the spoiler kit on there, candy red. Some of y'all remember that chrome package, three door. Ooh, that thing was nasty but I could have written that whole entire truck off. Some of y'all remember when I had the gray Silverado, the classic with the dual gas tank, with the stacked square headlights that I had when I, I, that I had painted charcoal gray. I could have written that off. Some of y'all remember when I had the, the, the Benz, the two door two, 240. 
Some of y'all remember when I had the Audi. Some of y'all remember when I had the Jag. Some of y'all remember when I had when I bought the Bentley. See, we have to be now, and, and I heard Shaq say one time, educate yourself. And he wasn't talking about school education. See, school education will get you a good job. And probably you'll probably have a nice career. But self-education, ladies and gentlemen, self-education will give you a nice lifestyle. And the lifestyle that you want. That's what self-education will do. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I think you guys. I'm your favorite, favorite plug, R.D. Muhammad. While I plug you in with the information that you need in order to make you successful. Tune in again, next, ladies and gentlemen, next week. We're going to be right here dropping you some more golden nuggets of information. And these are things that you can use, tools you can use, skills you can use to where you can change your zip code. Once again, we're running a special right now, ladies and gentlemen, for $67. This is the summer sale. It's the RDM, Online Marketing LLC Training Course, to where we provide you with all of these things listed right below. You will be able to see uh, this promo ad on all of my social media platforms as well as um, on my uh, um, YouTube channel. And you guys will also be able to see this on the uh, um, podcast channel as well. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you guys for chilling with me. I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace.